Food banks are needed now more than ever, with the increasing demand of donations for those who find themselves struggling financially to provide food for their family. We don't know how food banks are going to stop families and children going hungry this Christmas. Time at Christmas can create tension for some people, leading them to choosing between heating or eating, but also wanting to provide a special day for their loved ones. Between April 2015 and April 2016, Trussell Trust food banks provided more than 1.1 million three-day food parcels to people in crisis. Of these, more than 415,000 were for children. These figures are astonishing and need desperate attention. However, potential stigmas people using the food bank may be facing are creating misconceptions about its need in today's society. Do you think there's a stigma? Me by the food bank exactly. It's nice having a food bank, I think. I wouldn't know where to go if I had to in the first place. I wouldn't even know where to donate. Sometimes, yes, there can be a bit of a social stigma, which sometimes puts people off who are very much in need. If need, mass, you got to do it, haven't you? I know there's those other people going through the same thing. I think there is possibly a slight reluctance for people to admit <laughs> early on that mm. they need the food bank. People are almost look down upon for doing it and they shouldn't be. Knowing that that offer's there, then I would happily use it. If it's being given to you, mm. then you know, you take it and embrace it, I suppose. You know? I'm Laura Futter, and for this documentary, I will be walking you through the process that your donations go through with the food bank and exploring the stigmas that those using the service face. We're here at the food bank warehouse, where donations are brought in from either donation centres or directly from members of the public. After the products arrive, they are then weighed and sorted by date and category. Longer life products are packed into these crates, while shorter life products are stacked onto these shelves for immediate use. Food is then sorted into three-day nutritional boxes, specifically for one person, two people, or a family consisting of two adults and two children. A typical food parcel includes cereal, soup, pasta sauce, rice, beans, tinned fruit and veg, tinned meat, tea, coffee and biscuits. The boxes are catered for those with dietary requirements such as diabetes, allergies and halal. The boxes are also made up of products for those who don't have cooking requirements such as an oven or hot water. Often these boxes include non-food items such as toiletries, baby supplies, feminine products and also seasonal gifts such as advent calendars. Once the boxes are ready, they're then sent off to food distribution centres where they're given to people in need. Some centres offer free tea and coffee or even a meal for those collecting the packages. Here at Norwich Central Baptist Church, they act as a donation and distribution centre for all the food to be collected and sent to the warehouse, which is then brought back here after being sorted and prepared for the different clients. At this particular location, Rosemary is amongst the many volunteers who help out here at the church for the food bank. Just to start off, could you tell us a bit about what you do here? I volunteer on a fortnightly basis, so I come along and help get all the uh, get the tables ready, get the refreshments ready for, for the people who are going to come in, uh, get the boxes of food uh, ready and uh, a notice out saying that uh, the food bank's open, and then when people start coming for, for the food bank with everybody has a voucher and uh, as a volunteer you go and take the voucher have a look at what they've got and see how they're going to carry it home uh, try and engage them in conversation uh, if uh, they seem as if they want to do you think there's a stigma around using the food bank yes I, I think I think there certainly can be there are certainly some who really are very awkward about it and, and feel that it reflects badly on them that they've, they've had yeah. to come to, to a food bank and you have to work quite hard sometimes to, to put people at ease. Do you think there's anything that could be done to reduce that stigma and feeling within them that they've done something wrong by coming in? I guess it's up to us as volunteers to help the individuals who turn up here to feel more comfortable so that if they have to come again 
they don't feel as awkward as they did the first time. It's not an individual's fault if they need to come to rely on food bank. At this church, the donations are still coming in to support those in need. However, as more clients are referred to the food bank, it is important for donations to continue to cover all those in need. I spoke to the part-time employee at the food bank here. We've got a team of 50 volunteers over three shifts, so my, my role is to coordinate it mm. and to also to try to make the volunteers happy to come into work because they're all here on their own time. When you look at the sort of people who are assisted by the work that we do, it feels invaluable. To stand on the line and see people coming in um, with a, a voucher for food and to see grown men in tears will give you an idea of the humiliation that some people feel at having to rely on food parcels from, from a charity. So we've, we're terribly conscious of that. There's a, there's a very high percentage of people uh, in Norwich and the, in the wider country um, who are only one or two or three paydays away from, um, from you know, being destitute. So people should remember that there for the grace of God goes, goes all of us. I will now be talking to Hannah, the project manager of the Food Bank Charity, asking her some more in-depth questions and possibly exploring with her the stigmas surrounding the clients using their service. Hi Hannah, thank you for letting us interview you today. What's your job role? I'm the project manager, so whatever needs to be done really. So running the whole charity, looking after um, the volunteers who are in the office and ensuring the distribution centres are running properly, supporting the warehouse as well and anything else that needs doing. How do you think the food bank has changed over your time working here? For us as Norwich Food Bank, we have seen a slight increase in the numbers of referrals coming to us, so more people needing the food support, but we've also seen people needing other things. So for example, this winter we're helping people with fuel, so gas and electric vouchers. We've also been giving away free meals, so people are coming to us already really hungry and needing that support. So it's what else can we do as a charity to help that person? And during the Christmas period, how do things change here? We get a lot more referrals in December, so we tend to see over a thousand referrals in the month of December alone, whereas usually it's sort of six or seven hundred, so it's quite a big difference for us. There's also, as I mentioned, the sort of adage between heating and eating that people struggle with, so we see people who need more support with things that don't need to be cooked. Uh, where can people donate? There's loads of places that people can donate. So we've got hundreds of churches that have collection points. We've also got all the major supermarkets in Norwich that people can put their items in when they go shopping, which people find quite convenient because they're already doing their food shopping. People also come direct to the warehouse and sometimes people will also do a collection just themselves with between them and their family or them and their workplace and just set something up either long term or just for a month or so. What products are you specifically in need of? The things that throughout the year are always in need are long life milk, long life fruit juice and um, long life sponge pudding. Everything is long life, tin, jars, packets, that kind of thing. And then other items go up and down. So at the moment, for example, we need rice pudding and biscuits, but other times of the year it might be meat or um, tin tomatoes, but they sort of fluctuate. Do you think that there is a stigma around using the food bank? Yes, unfortunately I think there still is. Although food banks are often in the news and people talk about it a lot more readily and are happy to accept that food banks are needed, I think those that do use them still do feel that sense of embarrassment and, as you say, sense of stigma coming to use us. How do you think overall that that stigma could change? What could people do to help with that? I think some of it is understanding the kinds of people that come to Food Bank. Yes, we do have people who are on benefits and who aren't in employment, but equally we've got people who are in full-time employment and the wages they get just aren't enough to make ends meet. So it's understanding the different kinds of clients that we have. So linking to that, is there a statement that you'd like to say to the general public about the Food Bank? But for those who still aren't sure about the benefits of the food bank, it's just to say, come along and visit us, have a chat with us about what we do and the people that use us, and I'm sure we'll be able to change your mind. A man living on benefits whilst desperately looking for work was offered a job in Thetford. Living in Norwich at the time made it impossible for him to take it, as he wouldn't be able to afford the travel costs. He was told a travel grant would be made available, but it wasn't, and he was fired after being there only two days. A self-employed builder's wife left him and cleared him out financially. He was so distressed by this that he wasn't able to work and as a self-employed person, lost many contacts. A lady suffering from cancer, living in a rural area, has to go to regular hospital appointments 
but is too weak to walk to the bus stop so gets a taxi which is £30 a trip. This has led to large financial strain on her to keep on top of the bills. These are all people just like us. The only difference is these unfortunate events which were beyond their control. This gave them nowhere else to turn except the food bank. After hearing some of these clients' stories, I felt it would be best for us to talk to some of those who choose to give their time to these people through their volunteer work at the food bank warehouse and office. I'd like to discover why they choose to help out and what they think about the stigmas that might surround the clients they give their time for. I volunteer because I feel very sad that there are people who now can't afford to feed their children. I cannot imagine going to the cupboard and seeing the cupboards bare, and so I feel I want to help. I think um, the politics and world events over the last sort of year or so, Brexit and Trump, kind of made everybody feel a bit. It was making me feel very depressed. These are things that you know you only have one vote, you can't do anything about. So I thought I'd better go out and start making some good news myself. You know, I saw the impact when I was younger and uh, pretty much the same, except, you know, social security has become income support, you know, the new benefit that's coming in. So um, I know what it means to wait six weeks without any money. I've seen the, the food being given out, and I know there's lots of problems in our society that people need to, to be looked after because the society itself can't do it. We can do it, the people. I do think there's a stigma, but I think recently in one of the soaps they did a, a storyline that one of the families went to the food bank and I think that did an awful lot for families to realise that it's not, there is no stigma and anyone who is desperate can get food. I, th I think it's inevitable because this is, this is a culture of plenty and you look round and everybody seems to be doing well. I think people feel a failure. I can only speak from my own experience actually. When I didn't have enough to eat, even when it was my parents and I was very tiny, um, I think you feel there's something wrong, you've done something wrong, you're a failure. I think it's impossible for people to empathise unless they've kind of been fairly close to that situation. We need a system where people can feel that they don't have to feel so ashamed really about what's happening because it's what society does to people quite often. You know, we, everybody gets blamed and they say these people don't help themselves. Most people don't get much choice. I think, I think the, the uh, British people are very um, open to charity and help. So I just pray, you know, I just say to the people, just keep giving you know, and keep loving. I hope now you've gained more insight into the food bank and the journey your donations go on. Do you think the stigma surrounding food bank clients is fair? Mm -hmm.